Every weapon in Splatoon 3 has its own freshness level which grows the more you play and gets you some pretty sweet rewards. But what is the best way to level up your weapon's freshness? Are the rewards even worth it and how long would it take if you wanted to get every weapon to 5 stars? Hi, I'm Vasco and I like to commit science to answer questions you didn't even know you had. And today we'll talk about weapon freshness in Splatoon 3. Each weapon has a freshness meter that grants you a star when you level it up. A brand new weapon has 0 stars and a maxed out weapon has 5 you gain a different reward per star. The first one will give you a silver Sheldon license, which you'll need to have in order to buy a new weapon from Sheldon's shop. This dude doesn't even take cash anymore. I wanted to unlock all of the weapons in the game, so I had to get a bunch of my already unlocked weapons to one star and collect the Sheldon licenses I needed. That was my main motive for doing the research for this video, and thankfully, getting weapons to one star isn't complicated at all. But more on that in a minute. The second star gets you a sticker of that weapon for your lock, and the third star gets you a shiny holographic sticker of that weapon, also for your locker. Star number 4 gives you a badge of that weapon, which you can display on your splash tag, and the final star gives you a golden badge of that weapon. Okay, technically it's more of a normal colored weapon badge with a gold ink splatter behind it, but it's a gold badge, wahoo! Collecting all 8 badges sadly does not qualify you to become champion, nor does any badge give you access to hidden moves. It's just a thing that you can display on your splash tag to show off which weapons you've used a lot. The highest I've gotten any of my weapons to is 3 stars. Okay, well 4 stars now because I wanted to make sure you can actually get a weapon badge before making this video. I stopped at 3 stars because the amount of points needed to reach the next star grows exponentially. To get the first star, you only need 10,000 points, then another 15,000 points for the second star, then 35,000 for the third, and then 100,000 for the fourth star, and finally a whopping million more points to get the fifth star. That's a lot of points, so let's talk about how you get them. The points earned for weapon freshness are very similar to the points earned for your personal level. You can only get them from playing turf wars or anarchy battles and I guess league whenever they add that to the game. No points will be gained from salmon run or private battles. Splatoon 2 players, I'm talking to you here, private battles do not contribute to the freshness meter of your weapon. This is not the same as the badges in Splatoon 2. I've already done the science in the experience guide video so do check it out for more of the specific details but basically, if you play turf war and ink at least 500 points of turf, you get 1400 points for a win and 800 points for a loss. If you play Anarchy, you get 2500 points if you win with a knockout and 100 points times the amount of minutes played if you lose by getting knocked out. Otherwise, you get 500 points for a full 5 minute game and 5 additional points for every point your team scored during the match. If you end up winning, you get an extra 1500 points. As you can see, the points earned in Anarchy are a lot more variable than the points earned in Turf. I did some calculations to see which mode is more time efficient and for the average player, you get about 20% more experience points per minute of gameplay towards your weapon freshness through turf wars. This is at a 50-50 win-loss ratio. The advantage of turf over anarchy isn't as high if you're winning about 70-80% to of your matches, although the difference becomes negligible when you add in the loading and queue times. Anarchy is only better than turf if you have at least a 70% win rate and are getting one or more wins by knockout per hour of gameplay. So for the competitive players at home, anarchy is technically faster. For everyone else, turf is the way to go. This is purely a time efficiency thing, so play whatever mode you enjoy. Turf literally saves you about 10 minutes on average, so you're not losing that much by choosing to play Anarchy over Turf. I'm also assuming that most of you will be doing this to either get the stickers or the Sheldon license, and that means you're probably going to be playing with weapons that you're not too used to or too good with, so your win-loss ratio might not be over 70%, so in general my advice would be Turf or but again, play whatever you enjoy. Although the formulas for point gain towards your weapon freshness are the same for your personal level, there is currently no way to get any extra bonus towards those points. The food tickets do not affect weapon freshness, and sadly there is no bonus during Splatfest either. I even tried to see if the freshness flag thing had any effect on the experience gain, but sadly it did not. The freshness flag is that thing you see only for turf wars and it changes title and color as you level it up. It goes from dry all the way to super fresh gold and it changes based on the amount of points you have accumulated. One win is always one point, but one one loss varies depending on your flag. In the previous game, you would gain some extra experience points for ranking up the first time, but in Splatoon 3, you get nothing. At the end of the day, this is just a little flex flag that only you can see, so don't worry about it too much. Unless you're completionist, then I am sorry for your loss. Now back to the freshness meter. Just how long would it take to level up a weapon from 0 stars all the way up to 5? To do the math for this, I will use the most efficient and generalized method, which is Turf Wars with a 50-50 win-loss ratio. If 
if you are a skilled player, just treat this as the maximum amount of time it would take you to rank up your weapon to 5 stars. Since it would be pretty similar to your gains from playing either turf or anarchy, you're gonna have a better win loss ratio, it's gonna be faster than this. This is the maximum. Okay, so to go from 0 stars to 1 star, you need 10,000 points, which will take you about 30 minutes. Okay, maybe 40 with all the loading and queue times, but not too bad overall if you ask me. Keep in mind that this is basically how long it would take you to unlock a new weapon. To go from 1 star to 2, you're gonna need 15,000 points, which should take you about 45 to 50 minutes, yeah, basically an hour. From 2 to 3 stars, that jumps up to 35,000 points, which is a little over double, putting you at around the 2 hour mark. Going from 3 to 4 stars, which is the thing that will get you a new weapon badge, requires 100,000 points. This should take you another 5.5 to 6 hours to do so. And finally, going from 4 stars to 5 stars, you are gonna need a million more points. <laughs> That's uh, like 50 to 60 more hours of gameplay. So to go from 0 to 5 stars altogether, you need to be playing Turf Wars or Anarchy for about 70 hours with that specific weapon. If you're a completionist who wants to get a golden badge of each weapon in this game, I sure hope you reconsider. As of the December update, we should have around 64 weapons, so that would take you about 4500 hours. No big deal, right? Wrong! The time sink to do this is absolutely ridiculous! And something tells me that less than 10 people overall will ever bother getting the gold badge in every weapon by the time this game is done and dead. If you do feel the need to collect all of the badges, then please be kind to yourself and only go for the regular weapon badges, which should take you about 9 to 10 hours per weapon or about 640 hours of splatooning. This is a much more reasonable thing to do than getting all golds. If you just want to get all of the stickers, it gets even better with about 3 to 4 hours per weapon, so roughly 250 hours, which is still a lot. It's like a whole playthrough of a giant RPG game, but it's a reasonable trade off, especially if you aren't a big fan of things like Three Houses, Xenoblade, or Persona. And if you're like me and you simply want to max out your Sheldon licenses and get every weapon to one star, it should only take you about 50 50 hours of gameplay. Now that, that's a reasonable time sink. Overall, I'd say that it's only worth it to go for the gold badge in a weapon you truly care about or main, so I would expect someone like Bamboozler Propaganda to get a gold for every Bamboozler variant, or to see Chara rocking that Golden Range Blaster badge. But if you're an average player, maybe just go for the badge on your favorite weapon. You have to use it for at least 70 hours, which is about 3 full days of your existence. Me personally, I would just get all weapons to 1 star and then get around 8 weapon badges for the ones I like the most. That should qualify me for champion, right? What are your goals with the weapon freshness stars? Which weapon would you consider getting the gold badge? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, feel free to drop me a question about any other game features or mechanics you'd like to hear more about. I'm happy to go commit more science to help keep the community informed. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next one.